May I welcome you to these very special uh, lessons regarding the secret of prosperity. You say, is there really a secret to prosperity? I believe there is. Because when we speak of prosperity, we speak of more than money. We speak of total prosperity, which would mean total health to the body. <laughs> a man can have $50 million. If he's dying of cancer in the last stages, that just simply don't mean anything. He wouldn't call that prosperity. He'd call it death. If a man is, a, is the president of a bank and <clears throat> handles a lot of money and his wife runs off with another man, uh, he does not feel like he's prosperous. The, the, the most sensitive tie to his life has been broken and, and he does not feel prosperous. If a man is an executive in a factory and, and has a tremendous income, if his children get on drugs and go and commit suicide, that man doesn't want to be seen in public. He is not, he doesn't feel that prosperity is his. Money was his, but not prosperity. So we're talking about a total life, a total life, a prosperous life. And there are secrets related uh, to this. Now we have already ready dealt with what is prosperity. We gave two lessons to that, identifying what we believe to be prosperity. And then we dealt in the broad sense, nations and prosperity. That was a very fine lesson. Then we dealt with the second row, families and prosperity. God can actually bless families. Some of the some of the greatest treasures of this world have been put together by families that had the guts and the courage to stay together and stop fighting each other, you know? And then, and then uh, we dealt with persons and prosperity, that a lone man can, ha can be a genius, and, and he can have a, you know, a wife that, uh, just a good mother, just a good housewife, but he is a genius, and he can create prosperity in, in the commercial world, and his wife loves him at home, his children respect him at home, and he is surrounded with the fruit of that prosperity. And so it becomes a person and his prosperity. Now, in this present lesson, we want to deal with a, a, a very sensitive problem, a prosperity lost and regained. Uh, in, in our city, one of the presidents of, of Studebaker, uh, when they make, made those beautiful cars that went all over the world, uh, when he hit a time of depression, he blew his brains out with a gun in his own home. Here he was the president, and the dip he thought was a permanent one. Dips are never permanent. Uh, but if he'd have stayed alive a few more years, he'd have seen the crest come up, you see? And that company go into this greatest stage of prosperity that it ever knew. But, but he didn't wait for that. He got discouraged and quit. So we're gonna talk about prosperity, a loss and regained. And I think that will, that will be very beautiful. Then we have other lessons coming. I hope you receive all of them and enjoy all of them. This story we wish to present to you from the book of Job. We understand that the book of Job is one of the, one of the earth's earliest records of any kind. Uh, the matter of, of, of prosperity was very evident in the story of a man whose name was Job. Now, in this oldest document, uh, we discover the prosperity that we're that we are we're glad to find it in the oldest document. We found prosperity uh, uh, one, you know, received. Then we find it totally lost, totally lost in every department, lost. And then we find it gloriously regained, and in a greater fashion than before. Now, if we can get this across to the people of America, it'll show you that when you go down, you don't stay down. That life is not built like this. Life is built like this. And the devil sees to it that it does it. Not God, but the devil sees to it. And you have to learn to defend what God has given to you. Uh, you, you have to learn to, to think straight and don't stop thinking because you have an accumulation of wealth. But you got to continue in the same way and to share it, as we're going to teach in some later, later lessons, the way that God wants you to, in order to retain the prosperity that God has given you. This man, Job, before we get into his story, is mentioned in other places than in the book of Job. For example, the apostle James, in James chapter five, verse 11, says these words, we count them happy which endure. Now, now you see, I, I like that. You know, the, the word happy, uh, you could put prosperity there. 
Uh, you, you know, the word happy in the Bible means more than ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it means a way of life. It means a source of joy. And, and so we can say we count them prosperous, which endure. You know, it's talking about stickability. And the, and the uh, illustration of this enduring reverts back to this man that we're going to speak about. It says, you have heard of the patience of Job, and you have seen the end of Jehovah. So, so they were teaching us here that through this picture of, of this one man named Job, uh, that you see a man rise high, fall down, and get up. Now that's the essence that we wish to bring to you because some of you are discouraged. You may have lost your job. Uh, you, you, you may have lost your business. Uh, but remember uh, that a life is like that. And you can come up with a higher crest on a higher wave than you've ever ridden before. So get up. <laughs> and let's, let's get going. Now, also in the Old Testament, they spoke of this man. I don't want you to think that he only had one place in the Bible. I want to establish his reality. In the book of Ezekiel, and Ezekiel was one of the greatest prophets God ever had. In chapter 14, reading to you from verse 14, it says, Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, uh, now, now, he's talking about judgment against a nation. Uh, and he, he said, now, even though these three men, now imagine comparing Job with Noah and comparing Job with Daniel. You see, these three men were in it. Uh, they should not but deliver their own souls. God is showing that the, 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 the common sin and the community evil was so great that even though these mighty men, they could only save their own souls. You know, they... They would not have the ability to save the total population because the total population was so far away from God. But here in God's own word, we, we have here the establishment of the man Job that we're going to talk about and that he compares with men like Noah and men like Daniel. And, and you know, the Bible does it. You know, if the Bible does it, uh, you can accept it. Now, in, in Job, uh, number one, I think we would say, what is prosperity? You find that in Job chapter one and, and verse one. In Job chapter one and verse one, it said, there was a man in the land of Uz, and that's to the east of the Jerusalem area, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. You know, God's always had good people. God has always had good people. Uh, I, I know bad people <laughs> get the most publicity, but God has always had good people. He was a perfect man. He was an upright man. Isn't that beautiful? He, he just obeyed God. You know, we have some people, oh, nobody can be perfect. Well, honey, why don't you try? Are you there? Yeah. Don't keep confessing a negative. Uh, uh, stress a positive. Stop saying how bad you are and start thanking God for how good you are. <laughs> you, you'll find life a lot happier for yourself. Here was a man. God called him perfect. God said he was upright. God says that he feared God. That's in that first line. He feared God and he hated, he hated evil. Man, if this is the oldest book in the world, which we have been told that is, that, that it, the book is actually older than Genesis. It is such an old book that we find there a good man who was perfect, who was upright, who feared God, who hated bad. Now, that, that, that's what we need today is the same kind of a man. Verse 2, it says, There was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Now, he had ten kids. That was prosperity. That is prosperity. Any man that's got seven sons is a prosperous man. And, and, and three beautiful daughters, that brings up the other side of the family. And so they, they were beautiful people. Then verse 3 says, this man was rich. He says his substance was 7,000 sheep. Ha! Huh. That, that's not bad, is it? 7,000 sheep. How many herders would he have out there? Maybe he'd have to have at least one for each 100 sheep or 300 sheep or something other. Just think of the many he had working for him to take care of 3,000 sheep. And then it says the same man had 3,000 camels. Uh, you, you know, that's, <laughs> that's more camels than I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen camels all over Egypt. I've seen camels down in the Sinai Desert. Uh, I've seen camels in Jerusalem. I've seen camels, camels, camels. But I've never seen 3,000 all together. And here was one man. You say, what in the world did that mean? Transportation. He was a man of movement. Camels moved the treasure. They were strong beings. They could do without water for seven days or ten. And, and, and so they were beasts of burden. And they also showed how rich you were. 
any man that could own 3,000 camels was a lord over the land. Not only did he have 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, he had 500 yoke of oxen. Well, that's 1,000 oxen. So, and, and, and they were the, the, the pullers. You know, the camel and all of his dignity carried a beautiful merchandise, diamonds and gold on top of his back. But the, the oxen pulled on the ground. They were pullers. They moved stones and they moved wood and, and, and they, they, they were the, they, they were what we call beasts of burden. He had a thousand of them. Man, man, what if you had a thousand trucks? That's what these things were, you know? They were trucks in those days. He had a thousand trucks moving his merchandise around. Then he said he had 500 she asses. Uh, the, the asses in those days were the Cadillacs, you know, and the Lincolns. And so uh, if you had a beautiful ass uh, and, and the she asses were, were, were the ones that were better disciplined and, and, and uh, um, you know, move with man better and, and would let a lady ride on his back without throwing her off and so forth. And, and this was what princes rode on. Princes rode on she asses and, and uh, a very docile animal and, and one not too big, you know, like a camel and, and not too fast like a horse, but to move you, you know, less than 55 an hour. <coughs> and so here we, he had 500 of these. Boy, he had a lot of gals to move around and a lot of high class people to move around and have 500 uh, trucks, you might say, available. And it says, listen, and a very great household. Man, that'll put you to thinking, won't it? He, he might have had a thousand servants doing this and doing that, making everything comfortable, putting up brand new tents to live in and, and, and killing animals and making carpet for the floor and so forth. So this man was the greatest. Now, say greatest. That's right. Say greatest. He was the greatest of all the men of the East. He was the greatest. So it's good to talk about a prosperous man. He had made it. He had a wife. He had seven sons, three daughters. They were so wealthy, the Bible says they all lived in separate houses. And he had all these, uh, these asses and, and, and camels and, and sheep and so forth. He had prestige, but he also had something with God. Now, let's look a little further. In that same first, uh, that first chapter of Job, in verse 8, it says, And the Lord said to Satan. Now, <clears throat> you have some theology here. Uh, in the New Testament, it says that, that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Now, he can only accuse the brethren if he's up there, you see. And, and so, even though he is a fallen angel, he is still an angel. He is still an archangel fallen from the grace of God. And evidently, he still has access to the presence of God. <clears throat> and so it says, the Lord said to Satan, has I considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? Man, Job was God's number one prize in treasure. A perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and hates evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, or answered Jehovah, and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? You know, that, he, he is malicious. He's still doing the same thing today. If you're prosperous, say, well, he's just serving God because everything's good. You know, the devil ha has spoken of, of me personally and said, Somehow you wouldn't work for God like you do if you were sick. I'm not going to get sick, number one, and I'm going to work for God, number two, and, and, and the devil has nothing to do with it. We're not even answering him. It says, does Job serve God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him? You see, the devil calls prosperity a hedge. He's a wicked devil. He calls prosperity a hedge. Now, this is in your Bible, in the book of Job, right there by Psalms. We're working in chapter 1, verses 8 to 10. We're now in verse 10. A hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side, made a hedge around him, you see, where he's got it. Hast thou blessed the work of his hands? The blessing of God. Riches comes as a blessing of God. And his substance is increased in the land? Yeah, that's exactly where he was. Now, we find in this contest that God wanted to prove Satan wrong. And he says, now listen, you can remove his prosperity from him. You can remove his precious things, even his family from him. All right. In that same, that same chapter, chapter 1, uh, go down two verses to chapter 12. And it says, The Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in your power. Have you ever met a man that had millions and was broke? Well, I have several times. And it's a pretty sad state of affairs. He is almost confused because his brilliance, you see, brought him his money. And he doesn't know where it all went. He doesn't know what mistakes he made to bring him to that state. 
But God said to Satan, all his hath is in your power. Only upon him put not forth your hand. Now this teaches you a lot of things. The devil can put his hand on people. I mean, you got the Bible for it and you study humanity and you, you can see it, I'm sure. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And then we see, then we see a catastrophe. Same chapter, we see a catastrophe begin to take place. Here, the Bible says the most prosperous, prosperous man in the world at that time, and, and he was prosperous in more than one way. He was prosperous, and then he had all these different animals, which were the workhorses and the machines of those days. He was prosperous because he had beautiful children, 10 of them, 10 of them. And he was, he was prosperous because he had so many servants to serve him, and everything he touched just turned to pure gold. And then suddenly, something's going to happen. Now, I drop down two more verses. You were in verse 12, and drop down two more verses, and the devil's already, already done his job. And there was a messenger that came unto Job and said, the oxen were plowing, the asses feeding beside them. And that, that's interesting. <laughs> if you've been around the world, you'll find uh, that, that, uh, uh, that an ox and an ass will keep fellowship together. They, they'll even plow together if you want them to. It says they were feeding beside them, and, and which shows you, you know, the veracity of the story that you're showing. And the Sabians, that's a, a, a nation in that area, they came and fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only and escape alone to tell you. He was the only person saved, and, and here they were with maybe 100 or 200 servants, and they took all of that mass of fortune, you know, they took all that mass of fortune uh, away. While he was yet speaking, there, there came a, another servant of his and said, the fire of God has fallen from heaven. Now, I, <laughs> the devil has fire too, you know, and, and people always want to blame things on God. So the fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am left. And so now he had also lost his sheep besides his, ax, his asses and his oxen, you see. And while he was yet speaking, brother, when the devil hits you, boy, he just boom, 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 he, don't, he won't quit. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, the Chaldeans uh, made three bands, fell upon the camels, carried them away, and slain your servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped in order that I can tell you. Now, <laughs> the next verse is verse 18. Uh, follow me closely. While he was yet speaking, man, he hadn't got it out of his mouth. Uh, there came another and said, thy sons and thy daughters. Uh, they were eating and drinking wine in the elder brother's home. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, smote the four corners of the house. It fell upon the young men, and they're all dead. I mean, I mean, the, all of his ten kids were dead at the same time. I'm the only one escaped. Then arose Job and rent his mantle shaved his head, fell upon the ground at worship, and said, Naked came I into the, my mother's womb. Naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The next verse says, In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Now, man, this is teaching you how to live in your ups and downs, and your victories and your defeats. Paul says, I know how to be abased, and I know how to be abound. Most people don't know how to do either one. <laughs> they don't know how to be a base. They feel like a dog. And if they're bound, then they become a king. You see? No, no. You're the same. You're the same little person. When you're based, you're not a dog. You're the same person you were. When you're bound, you're not a god. You're the same person. You've got to learn what Paul learned to know how to be a base, that you don't go down with it because you don't have any money. Uh, and when you're bound, you're, not, you're the same little person. You're not something else. Don't go on an ego trip just because you have prosperity. If you do, you'll have a fall down at the end of it. So here's the inside story of really the first story there ever was on the subject of prosperity. Now, in the next chapter, if you got your Bible open there, in Job chapter 2, verse 9, then said Job's wife unto him, why do you retain your integrity? Now, some people have a wife like that. Others have a wife that keep encouraging them. But uh, she said, curse God and die. She said, you've come to the end. You're worth nothing and nothing else you've got. Curse God and die. And in the, the next verse, he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women. Speak it. Evidently, they had some stupid people in those days. You speak as one of the foolish women. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? Now, he got that thing wrong. You see, he did not know that the devil had done it. 
the devil had done it and God to prove to him that the man had integrity and if he had nothing, he would serve him. You see, he didn't understand it. In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Those are some of the greatest words in the whole Bible. In all this, he did not sin with his lips. His relationship with God was retained. And I don't know how long he was down, but the time came. In Job chapter 42, verse 1, Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou, camest, that thou canst do everything. Hey, what, what a glorious thing, he said. And that no thought can be withholden from thee, that God knows our thoughts. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore, have I uttered that I, un, I have uttered that I understand not. You see, like, like I told you, he made statements that were not true. But he said, I uttered things that I didn't know anything about. And he was sorry for it. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. You see, he, he was admitting that he had said things that were out of his. He didn't know the devil had challenged God over his life. The devil may challenge God over your life. That you've been blessed so great. Hey, the devil says, but if you didn't have that, he wouldn't serve you. He's only serving you because he's wealthy. You see, you got to say, no, no, I'll serve God if I don't have a dime. I'll serve God if I'm sick. I'll serve God anywhere. You got to get serving God first in your life. That is true prosperity. All right. He says, here I beseech thee and I will speak and will demand of thee and desire unto thee. I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eyes seeth thee. So in his first, in his first instance where he had all this wealth, he knew God by hearing, but he said through his sorrow, through his down and up again, now he knew God face to face. Look at verse seven, that same chapter. So after that, the Lord has spoken these words in Job. Uh, the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends. For ye have not spoken of me, the thing that is right, as my servant Job had. So the men that were criticizing him, God rebuked them and, and said that Job would have to pray for them. And then in verse 10, the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Now neighbors, God will do the same thing for you. God will do the same thing for you. Believe me, sir. Believe me, lady. He can do the same thing for you. God turned the captivity of Job when he had prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice. Say twice. <laughs> God gave Job twice as much as he had ever had before. So rather than having, having 7,000 sheep, he ended up with 14, you see. And rather than having 6,000 camels, now he had 3,000, he had 6,000 camels. So rather than having 500 yoke of oxen, he had 1,000 yoke of oxen. He received more wealth. He received total prosperity. Job survived the realities of living on planet Earth under the Adamic, under the Adamic problem that he created in the Garden of Eden. And so, when we study it with no understanding and no counselors, he didn't have any. <laughs> it was a rare, raw thing, you see, that he went through with, but he survived. He survived. Job defeated the devil at the devil's own game. <laughs> yeah, the, he defeated the devil at his own game and came out a total winner, a total winner. He came out and, and God's, God said to him, uh, you can now have twice as much as you have ever had before. Now, in my living for so many years and in my ministering in, in so many nations, we have seen people tried the same way. And we want to tell you that you may lose prosperity, you can gain it back with the right attitude. He said, Job did not sin with his lips. Job did, did not accuse God falsely. He stayed in there with integrity and the wave went up, you see, to a higher crest than ever before. Why don't you right now say, Lord, <laughs> I, I'm going to thank you for prosperity. Number one, you should be prosperous. God made every one of us to be prosperous. There's not supposed to be a poor man on the face of the earth. When Jesus Christ shall rule and reign on, this, on, on the face of this earth for a thousand years, there will be no poor people. The Bible says each person shall dwell under his own fig tree, which is prosperity, and shall have his own place. You see, there'll be nobody renting. There'll be no banks. There'll be nobody borrowing. Everybody, the Bible says, Christ shall bring total prosperity to the face of the earth. Men have tried it and failed. You say, why? They don't have the right heart. You'll never bring total prosperity till you love everybody and nobody but God <laughs> loves everybody. And so in, in his kingdom, he's going to bring this total prosperity, but he can bring it now. 
Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. He says, not only would it be given unto you a little, but says, you should be full, you should be shaken, and then you shall be refilled, and then it will run over into the cup. Shall men, say men, yeah, shall men give unto your bosom. And so in this life, there's prosperity. Believe God for it. Move into it. And remember, if you lose at a point, it's like the battle, you know. Yeah, you might lose a battle, but you don't lose the war. You see, the devil might knock you down, but you bounce up again. I want you to bounce. I want you to come back into a place of great prosperity.